Hey guys, welcome to another video. This video will be a quick update on the 2U AMD Ryzen server I built recently. And since it performed well at our last LAN party, uh, this video will be, will be about several subjects. One is quieting down the server. The other is how to do the GPU pass-through. And lastly is how to create the storage configuration I talked about. Now the last two subjects, the GPU pass-through and the storage configuration, I've written blog articles about. So I'm not going to discuss that in a video because it would be a very lengthy video. And it's basically only interesting for the people who are looking for it and those can benefit more from the written form than the video. So make sure to check out the links I've listed in the description below. And if you have any questions, you can comment here or on my blog. And uh, yeah, that should cover GPU pass-through and the ZFS storage configuration. Oh, and the ZFS article also has most of the hardware listed in detail. So if you're looking for that, also check it out. So. How to quiet down this server? Well, most of you probably already saw that I basically replaced the stock fans with Noctua models. And since I was already using a, a Noctua CPU cooler, the only non-Noctua fans that were left were from the power supply and the video cards. Well, one of the video cards was passively cooled, but still. So the fans I used were the NF minus A8 PWM types from Noctua and they fit although very snugly. Uh, I wanted to keep the rubber uh, screw hole protectors on there and because of that they only barely fit into the housing. Some even deformed a little bit but not too bad that I wouldn't fit anymore. The cables that are on these fans are also a bit longer than the normal one but if you squeeze it in the open space in the holders uh, deep enough, you can actually make it work and make it fit snugly, but it fits. Now using these Noctua fans made the server a lot quieter, but these fans were still running at 12 volt, so going full tilt. And although they were a lot quieter, I still wanted it to be a bit more quiet than that. During building, I noticed an interesting feature on this server. It includes a fan PCB, which seems to be uh, purposed or built for using four pin fans. And the included fans with the chassis were only three pin fans. And then I noticed that next to the Molex connector, there was a four pin header to which you could also connect a four pin fan. But connecting a fan there did nothing. So I wondered, okay, Maybe you can connect it up to your motherboard and it, it'll relay the PWM signal and the, the TACO fan signal so that the motherboard can measure how fast the fans are spinning uh, to the motherboard. So there wasn't any cable included with the server chassis, but I used some DuPont cables which fit snugly over the connectors and they connected it together. Of course, I did some testing first, so I removed the Molex connector and then connected the four pins to the motherboard to see if any power was being transferred. But the power circuitry seems separated between the extra four, pin, uh, extra four pins and the Molex connector. So then I reconnected the Molex connector. I already replaced the fans with four pin Noctua fans. And then I only connected two cables to the motherboard. And what do you know? Server boots up, fans go full tilt. But after a few seconds, Motherboard takes over and quiets the fans down. So now you have one header on your motherboard, which can control four fans. Awesome. So I've set my BIOS to the turbo mode for the CPU fan and to the silent mode for the chassis fan. And I've measured the temperatures in Linux uh, for the video card and the network cards and stuff like that. And that st still seems to provide enough airflow so that nothing overheats. So let's listen to some samples uh, of the chassis running with the stock fans.
and of the Noctua fans, but then quieted down using PWM from the motherboard. So, this quieted down the server enough to where it's actually, well, it's running over there in the background. And I don't believe my microphone is picking it up. So, success. So the last point I wanted to address is power usage. On average, when it's running one or two VMs and or containers, the server draws about 100 watt from the wall. Now this seems a lot, but keep in mind there is two video cards in there. There are two network cards in there, one dual port gigabit Intel and one dual port Mellanox 10 gigabit SFP. And then there's six hard drives so those also take up a lot of power. And then there's three SSDs in there. Don't take much in idle, but still. All that added together, 90 to 100 watts average isn't actually too bad. So, last up a reminder, check out those blog posts I mentioned. They're down in the description. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.